Thank you so much, Tom. That was just transportive. It was beautiful, very beautiful. And Lori, thank you so much for the meditation and setting the stage for us, um, really helping us feel into what this day is about. And, and so what this day is about, as you know, um, is about remembering our ancestors, our friends, all that have passed on. And Annie and I um, thought this might be a good day for us to use to acknowledge especially uh, some of our members who have passed on this year. Obviously, with COVID-19, we haven't been able to gather and we haven't been able to honor and celebrate the lives of um, several who have passed this year. And um, so we want to talk specifically about those. And also, uh, in the process, we started thinking about a need to have a memorial recognition of all th those who have passed from our center over the years. So today we're going to have um, 24 individuals on our slides that we'll mention, um, some very briefly, and some will just look at their photos and, and just hold them in our hearts and remember them. We obviously know there are many, many more people who have touched all of our lives personally, um, our own family members and friends and spouses. And, um, and so we want also to bring all of those to our remembrance. So I invite you to write in the chat window the names of, of your loved ones, your friends, um, who have passed recently or long ago. Because as we know, no matter how long ago this uh, the transition occurs for our loved ones, we still hold them very much in our hearts and we still miss them very much in the the day-to-day -day physicality of our lives. So so I, I do invite you to, to list um, anyone's name that you want us to remember and you want to just put out there as uh, your, your own remembrance as well. And, and as Lori mentioned, it's not just the humans, it's all those beloved pets. And, uh, and we know from our Yahoo group that many of us have suffered some losses um, this year uh, in particular. And, and so write down their names, too. You know, it all matters. And um, so, so we're working on, Annie and I are working on a, a binder that will contain um, the pictures and remembrances, the obituaries, um, you know, different things that uh, people in our community have have brought through over the years, and and we'll just be doing a little sampling of that today through our slideshow. So I'm going to attempt to uh, share my screen, and I think. There we go. All right. So someone mentioned food, <laughs> and <laughs> we know that in all of our gatherings, you know, we've always had just scrumptious food to share. And and this uh, was a picture I had in the file of um, one table of I think four that were uh, part of a gathering that we had at one point. And so so we offer the sweets to all to all our beloved ancestors and loved ones. And let's see. I'm going to move it on. So here's, we're going to start with year 2020. And here's a photo of our empty sanctuary. And perhaps it's filled with the souls of all who have passed this way. I like to think that that's the case. I like to think that I am inviting everyone here today to join with us that, that is not here. Um, and so we just recently learned that Suzanne Hopkins passed away on uh, September 13th, 2020. Suzanne came to our center many years ago, and I um, interestingly worked with Suzanne, boy, 
a long, long time ago, maybe 30 years ago, uh, as a speech pathologist. She was a speech pathologist, and um, we uh, just crossed paths for a few years back in the day. And uh, and then, lo and behold, many, many years later, she uh, showed up at Interfaith, and it was a wonderful reunion. And uh, Suzanne offered, a, a, I remember, a great workshop, um, a writing workshop and a workshop about... Um, your legacy, really kind of focusing on uh, what do you want your legacy to be. So uh, she was a delightful being. Uh, and um, Suzanne, we invite you today to just be with us in spirit and know how much we loved you. And then we're going to go on to Frances Petritus. And she passed August 12, 2020, and Annie is now going to go up to the lectern, and she's going to speak um, a bit longer about Francis and Joanna Courteau and Donna Aris, all three people who we know we would have loved to have a great celebration here for. Uh, and so I'll turn it over to Annie now. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Delith. Pat Frances Petritus was a dear friend to many of us at Interfaith. She died on August 12th of natural causes of this year. Frances had had a stroke a few years ago, maybe three or four years ago, and in the spring this year, she had another small one. The last time I talked to her in early August, she did not seem totally present. I kept in touch with her for the past few years. We always had great conversations. She rarely complained about her situation and always had some great spiritual quotes and poems for me. She loved gardening and had some very devoted clients in her gardening work. I would often join her and carry home extra plants myself propagating them and selling them back to you as a fundraiser for interfaith. I'm sure I have, I still have, I know I still have many of her plants that I, um, I, I keep propagating. And she helped out in our garden here while we were doing our own garden here at, at the Interfaith Center. We knew Frances as Pat in the earlier days at Unity of Ann Arbor, and I first met her in 1996, shortly after Larry and I and Alex moved here from New Mexico. She had recently moved from Texas, where she had spent time with her mother in the last years of her life. I met her through friends from Unity. She was always and forever part of our speaking circle, which Dave Bell and I started at Unity and then continued I continued through the years here at Interfaith. Her early life was spent in August, Austin, Texas. She went to Catholic school and was a competitive swimmer for 11 years and later kayaking. She went to the University of Michigan as an undergraduate. Her work life was spent both in Texas and Michigan as a systems engineer with various companies focusing on training and publishing. In 2013, Frances decided to apply to the fellowship for today's School of Ministry in Lansing. She had a lot of support from all the friends around her and at Interfaith, and she finished her two and a half year program in one year because of all the spiritual and religious studies she had been doing for over 15 years. I have been reading her multi-page application in it. She talks about the importance of the Alcoholics Anonymous community and how it supported her for 30, the 34 years of her sobriety. Frances volunteered to serve as a host for a local Sufi group while they met here for Friday evening prayers several years ago. She frequently participated in readings and meditations in years past, sharing her experiences with avatar training and study of A Course in Miracles. In more recent times, she generously shared her wisdom during open mic on Sundays at Interfaith. One of my favorite quotes that Francis brought to my attention from the Course in Miracles was this, the holiest place on earth is where an ancient hatred has become a present love. And I know that that's something we should all be thinking about as we, go in, as we are in this um, election season. 
I would like to read one of her poems called Home, Coming Home. I will be a thousand faces, a thousand times, a thousand places, and ever so infinitely many ways. Some that you want to see, some that you long to see, some that you hate to see, and some that you refuse to see. All this and more just to let you see yourself. You are more than any of this. You are more than all of this. Your beauty and grace and love extend beyond all. Here rests your truth. Here rests your true self. Welcome home. And I'd like to read to you about jo Joanna Courteau, who was a member for quite a few years. Since approximately 2008, Joanna, she was very active in our community for many years and is responsible for the start of our caring committee in particular and many aspects of, many of, well, I seem to not have a sentence that works. <laughs> Excuse me. Encouraging people to be engaged in activities at the center. She died on July 5th, 2020 at her home in Ann Arbor. Her obituary tells us she was born in 1939 in Lou, Poland, and spent her childhood years with her family in labor camps in the Ukraine and then as a war refugee under the direction of the International Red Cross in the Soviet Union, Iran, India, and Africa. Joanna always described this period of her life as one of fun and adventure, and it was during these times that she developed her lifelong capacity for learning new languages and her love of travel. The family eventually settled in Brazil, where Joanna graduated from high school. She won a scholarship to attend the University of Minnesota and arrived in the U.S. knowing no English. So her advisor recommended that she take a Spanish class to have something easy, and a Spanish class is where she met Richard Corteau, her future husband. She earned a Ph.D. in Romance Languages in 1970, completing her dissertation while having and raising two children. She worked as a professor of Spanish and Portuguese for more than 40 years at Sullins College in Virginia and at the University of Arkansas and at Iowa State University. More important to her than any professional recognition or accomplishment, however, was her enthusiastic mentorship of hundreds of students over the years. She offered support, advice, and welcoming arms to not only her assigned advisees, but to any student who came to her. She developed and led study abroad programs in Portugal and Spain for nearly a decade. She hosted small dinners and big parties for her students, as well as a large community of academics, international visitors, and political activists, and was often referred to as the hostess with the mostess. She loved nothing more than gathering a group and sharing food. Joanna retired from Iowa State University in 2007, she then moved to Ann Arbor, Michigan to be close to her two grandchildren. She was a devoted grandmother, attending every school, event, concert, and play that the grandkids were involved in. Joanna became interested in storytelling. She was a frequent participant in the Moth storytelling events. Several times her story was voted top for the evening, and she advanced to the, to the Grand Slam, one of her stories is featured in the National Moth podcast. Alongside her lifelong interest in literature, stories, and storytelling, Joanna was a passionate, progressive political activist and social justice warrior. Early in her years in the U.S., she started working on civil rights issues as well as the peace movement. She enthusiastically embraced the caucus process in Iowa, working on behalf of a series of progressive presidential candidates over the years and maintaining her residence in Iowa so that she could continue to be involved there. She participated in her last caucus by video conference in February 2020. 
In Ann Arbor, she worked tirelessly for social justice causes, including as a volunteer with the Dispute Resolution Center, where she worked with dispute resolution programs and restorative justice. She was an active community member in her faith communities, the Interfaith Center for Spiritual Growth, and the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Ann Arbor. She worked tirelessly on behalf of immigrants, offering translation services when needed and supporting the sanctuary movement. At the Interfaith Center, she started the Caring Committee, which we still do, and we're having a meeting after. <laughs> and anyone is welcome, of course. And she, and she encouraged Tuesday potlucks, people getting together food to share food and friendship. Joanna and Maureen McMahon started a writing group which took place after the potluck. She carried on her tradition of encouraging people to get involved on committees at Interfaith. She was a regular attender of the lunch group that met at Mark's Diner after service on Sundays and at locations during the week, other locations. Her friends describe her as a scholar, a storyteller, an actress, an activist, a migrant, a wife, a mother, a grandmother to all, a seeker, and most of all, an example of radical, unconditional love. She is missed by her family and her large community of friends, including many of us here at Interfaith. Donna Aris is the next, our next one. You will notice in, in Don, Donna's story many similarities to Joanna's story. Donna Aris talks about the healing journey of her life. The full version will eventually be found on our website and in the memorial uh, volume that Delith and I are working on. She had an extraordinary adventurous life. A teacher in her spiritual psychology class once said, some people are healed by grace, but for the rest of us, it's a journey. She was born in Lithuania to a middle-class couple. She had a sister two years younger. When she was 10 years old, World War II broke out and her homeland was occupied by the Russian army. Her closest relatives were deported to Siberia and the rest of them were living in uncertainty and fear. Then the Germans invaded. The family was caught by armed German soldiers and were taken to a labor camp where even as a child she was forced into hard labor with the adults. Eventually she ended up in a refugee camp in northern Germany at the end of the war. They were unable to return to Lithuania, but now they were free. Young people could go to school and care packages from the United States helped with food and clothing. It was easier for her to cope now because here she was making friends, doing well in school, being liked by her teachers, discovering her talents in acting, music, and dance, and really enjoying her young life. Years quickly went by and the Canadian government came to recruit them for labor in Canada. Fast forward some 25 years, Donna had been married for 22 of them and now divorced and mother of four children. The two youngest daughters are five and nine years old. She has no job, no money, is sitting at her kitchen table aware that she reached the end of her rope and that the thread of her life is about to break. Then something leads her to her bookcase and she picks up an old book of poetry which she had never read. She opens it and an ancient Persian poem hits her eyes. When, thou, when of thy mortal goods art thou bereft, and when to thee only two loaves are left, sell one and with the dole buy hyacinths to feed thy soul. She gets up and starts moving. New and different experiences begin to show up for her. She gets into therapy, starts participating in Al-Anon, and do the very popular EST training. 
This begins opening new doors for her into herself and to other new experiences, workshops, seminars, books, and anything else that looked helpful in recovering her own health and preventing the health of her young daughters from being affected more than it already has. Just as she begins dreaming about finally becoming good enough and beginning to practice her new profession, she learns that her son in Ann Arbor has been diagnosed with a serious case of hepatitis C. Dana, Donna gave up her job and went to take care, came to take care of him. You can imagine how difficult this was for her. Donna brought her considerable spiritual experience to interfaith. She was a science of mind practitioner and participated in healing prayers after our Sunday services. In her own words, for a long time I questioned myself why my life was so filled with suffering and lack and where I had missed the mark. Then one day, unexpectedly, I just became aware how peaceful my life had become. And while living in subsidized senior housing with not much money in my pocket, how rich and fulfilled I have been feeling. It's an experience difficult to describe, and I'm convinced that there are enough people alive who would trade all their riches for such an experience, which no money in the world can buy. And that's it. Thank you, Annie. And now we are going to just take a brief look at each of the others um, through the years. So in 2019, Diane Horn. John Cosland. James McNabb. Andy Anderson, two thousand eighteen, Joyce Jurgensen, Scott Ryder, Hossein Mosavat. Two thousand seventeen, Diane Lindbergh, Art Marjoram, two thousand sixteen, Randall Peacock. Todd Elf, Lorna Brown, Two thousand fifteen, Mart Stenzel, two thousand thirteen, Tom Whites, two Two thousand twelve, Helen Slomovitz, two thousand ten, Jim Melby.
Gary Logan. Two thousand eight, Linda Hiller, two thousand <laughs> Marvin Parker. Sorry, let's go back to Marvin for a moment. And in 1998, Karen Rodriguez. And that's where we stop for now. And uh, God bless you all. <laughs> we certainly miss you. We miss you all so much. And we're so grateful that you passed through our lives and shared your gifts with us. And may we continue to feel your presence. And may you know how much we love you. Thank you, everybody. And so now let's have open mic time for a little while.